please reach out. I'm here to help. Other than that, let's get into it. All right, so C3, use contingencies of reinforcement. This part of the task list has several different items. Okay, we're gonna go over each of them, but you need to start first with what's a contingency. Contingencies set the stage, okay, for you to deliver reinforcement. As an RBT, you should constantly be establishing these contingency situations, okay? So what is a contingency? A contingency is an if-then statement or a first-then statement. If you do your homework, then you play video games. First you clean up, then you get your snack, okay? Contingencies are great ways to establish instructional control. It's a great way to set up situations for reinforcement, okay? And this is something you should be doing constantly. Placing in demand, placing an if statement. Once they complete it, then you deliver reinforcement or what you said you deliver, okay? These are contingencies. This is what you should be using constantly. These if then statements. So question, Tiffany is driving her son to school. Yesterday he received detention for talking in class. Tiffany gives her son $5 and tells him that he must behave today in school. What is this an example of? Okay, so think about it. Is this a contingency? Did Tiffany set up an if-then statement? So an if-then statement would have been, if you behave today in school, then you get $5. What did Tiffany do? Tiffany reversed it. She gave him the $5 and then said, now you have to behave. That is incorrect, okay? This is bribery. When you reverse that contingency and you deliver reinforcement and then you tell them, this is what you must do, you're now bribing, okay? They already received the reinforcement. They've already received the item. What's the motivation to work? What's the motivation to behave? He's already got the $5, right? So this is not a contingency, okay? This is a bribe. Okay, continuing, conditioned and unconditioned reinforcement. So we know we have our contingencies, right? We're setting up if then statements. If you do this, then you do this. So if you read, then you get what? Reinforcement. So what are our two types of reinforcement? We have conditioned and unconditioned. Unconditioned reinforcement is considered primary reinforcement. It requires no learning history and no pairing to act as a reinforcer, okay? So as humans, as people, we're all innately programmed to where these will serve as reinforcement. We don't need to learn it. We don't need pairing. These are reinforcement. Food, water, oxygen, warmth, all these things, okay, will serve as reinforcement. Now you might say, well, I can go a long time without food. I can go a long time without warmth. I don't like drinking water. That might be true, but given enough deprivation, eventually these will serve as reinforcement and you will work for these to earn these, okay? And of course, it increases future frequency of behavior because they are types of reinforcement. Alternatively, what is a conditioned reinforcement or a reinforcer? It's a secondary reinforcement, okay? It requires pairing and learning history to act as a reinforcer. So you have to take this unconditioned stimuli, pair it with a conditioned or an unconditioned reinforcement, okay, an already established reinforcement, and then you create what? A conditioned reinforcement. Of course, it increases future frequency of behavior because it's reinforcement, okay? Common examples, money, praise, tokens, okay? But you can really pair anything with established reinforcement. And if you do it correctly and effectively, then you can create new reinforcers, okay? And that's how we get a variety of reinforcers, right? We get a very powerful established reinforcer and we start pairing other things with it, okay? We're not programmed to where praise functions as a reinforcer. Money doesn't function as a reinforcer until we learn, right, through pairing, okay, the value of money and praise and tokens. So question, you have been with a client for one month now. 
During their breaks, the client loves playing with Legos and Roblox. Your BCBA wants to implement a token economy to use during DTT. How would you establish the tokens as a reinforcer? So we need to create this token economy, okay? Token economy is where you're earning tokens or cards or whatever and exchanging those for items, okay? So A, tokens are already established reinforcers. So are tokens primary or secondary? Tokens are secondary, okay? They are not already established. That's what we're trying to accomplish. We need to establish them through pairing and learning. So A is out. B, provide the client with tokens randomly throughout the day. So what good would giving tokens randomly okay, with no purpose do? Are you actually pairing these tokens with anything? Well, you might be by chance, right? I mean, if you're just randomly delivering tokens, they might get paired with something. But are you pairing them with what you want to pair them with, with already established reinforcers? No, you need to have a purpose. You need to have a plan. So B is out. C, when your client engages in the target behavior, provide them tokens, and then have the client exchange its tokens for Legos and Roblox. So what are you teaching here? Well, you're teaching if you earn enough tokens, you can exchange those for Legos and Roblox. So Legos and Roblox are established reinforcers. Okay, you wanna create this new token reinforcement. So now you're pairing the two together and you're teaching Okay, that if you earn tokens, you get your Legos and Roblox. These tokens are now acquiring reinforcement properties, okay, through pairing and learning. So C is really good. D, have your client manned for tokens and exchange the tokens for Legos and Roblox. No, a common mistake is where the RBT will make the client ask for the tokens, okay? It's not the point, right? The client is receiving tokens for target behaviors, right? So if manding is a target, then you can deliver it for manding, but they're not asking for the tokens and then exchanging them. You should be delivering the tokens contingent on target behavior. Remember, the tokens are acting as reinforcement. You want them to be reinforcers, okay? So you want to deliver them contingent, contingently, right? Contingent on the target behavior. So the answer here is C. All right, easy, easy question. Okay, all of the following are unconditioned reinforcers except what? Food, praise, water, warmth. Easy question. What is the only secondary reinforcer here? What is the only thing that needs to be learned? And that of course is praise. Okay, continuing. C3, continuous and intermittent schedules. These give people a lot of trouble but they shouldn't. It's very easy when you start to understand it. So let's start with continuous schedules. What is a continuous schedule of reinforcement? Reinforcement is delivered for every response or occurrence of behavior. It's used to establish or strengthen novel behavior. It's an FR1 or a fixed ratio one, right? CRF. People get confused because when they see every response, they think, well, it can't be every response, right? No, continuous reinforcement is every single response. That is the definition of continuous reinforcement. If it isn't every response, then it's intermittent, right? There's only one type of continuous reinforcement. And that's FR1 because every single response is getting reinforced. You're establishing or strengthening behavior. So every time your client identifies a body part, you give them a gummy bear, you're working on tacting every time they independently tact, you give them praise. FR1 every single time. Intermittent, okay? Reinforcement is delivered for some occurrences of behavior. So that could be every two behaviors, every five, okay? Every six minutes, an average of every five behaviors, an average of every 10, okay? Anything that isn't continuous is intermittent. It's that simple, okay? used for maintaining established behavior. So you've already taught and strengthened it. Now you need to maintain it. So you're fading the reinforcement out, okay? Some examples are slot machines, okay? Or booking a reservation at a popular restaurant, right? Every time you call to book the reservation, 
doesn't mean you're going to be given the reservation if it's a popular restaurant, right? So that reinforcement is intermittent, right? It's not every time, it's only sometimes. So here are our schedules, okay? You have a fixed ratio, variable ratio, fixed interval, variable interval. These are our basic reinforcement schedules. A fixed ratio, okay, is a constant number of responses. A fixed interval is a constant amount of time. Notice fixed means constant, okay? Ratio is response, interval is time. The variable ratio is a changing or average number of responses. Variable interval is a changing or average amount of time, okay? So notice ratio is still response, interval is still time. So all you need to do to remember these is break it down by words. Fixed means constant, variable means changing. Ratio is based on responses, interval is based on time. So if I say fixed interval, you should immediately know that means constant time. If I say variable ratio, you should be immediately know that's a changing or average number of responses. Okay, so easy, so straightforward. And then if we add a number behind each schedule, that just tells you the number of responses or the number of time. Okay, super easy, super straightforward. Okay, which of the following is the best example of a continuous reinforcement schedule? A, every time you pick up your phone, you check your email. So every time you check your email, are you getting email? No, right? So sometimes you don't have an email. Sometimes you don't have the email you want. So is that continuous or intermittent? Well, that's gonna be intermittent, right? Because you're not reinforced every time you check your email. B, you are trying to buy a PS5. You refresh the store website throughout the day. Is this continuous or is this intermittent? Are you being reinf reinforced by being able to buy a PS5 every time you refresh? Well, obviously not, right? Because you're doing it constantly throughout the day. You can't predict, right, when it's gonna happen. C, your roommate wakes up for work before you and makes coffee each morning. When you wake up, you pour yourself a cup. Is this continuous or is this intermittent? Well, this would be continuous because it happens every single time. Every time you wake up, you pour coffee, okay? every single time. When it happens every single time, okay, on FR1, you know as soon as you walk over that coffee is going to be ready, okay, every single morning and you can pour yourself a cup. That is FR1, that is continuous. D, last time you went to Vegas, you won a thousand dollars playing roulette. Next time you go, you're going to play more roulette. This is the opposite of continuous, right? You have no way to predict or no way to know if you're going to continue winning at roulette, okay?